Much-loved local entertainer Storm Large returns to the Aladdin Theater this month with her 16th annual Storm Large Holiday Ordeal. Storm shot to national prominence with her appearances on shows like Rockstar Supernova and America's Got Talent. But Portland clubgoers might remember her performing with Pink Martini or as the lead singer of Storm in the Balls and their long-standing weekly run at Dante's. So don't miss this rare chance to catch her live this month for a night of music, comedy, and more on the 24th and the 25th at the Aladdin Theater. Tickets are available at stormlarge.com or at aladdin-theater.com. You know, Portland has so many incredible bar options, but it's sometimes hard to come up with fresh and fun ideas for sober outings. And I'm speaking from experience because last month, I, like many others, attempted Sober October. Keyword, attempted. So today on CityCast Portland, Catherine Chu Hamilton, food editor over at Portland Monthly, is here to help acquaint us with a slew of alternatives. She's recently written about some Portland bars where drinking isn't the main focus and is sharing some of her top picks. It's Tuesday, November 14th. I'm Claudia Meza, and this is what Portland's talking about. A big reason that you're here, Catherine, is because my sober October didn't go that well. I had a lot of problems trying to find places to like hang out with friends. And so you recently wrote a story highlighting a bunch of bars that are sober friendly, like which on your list are actually known for their non-alcoholic drinks? Yeah. So Bar Suzol has a really good uh, zero proof drink list. Um the owner, Gregory Yorday, you know, the James Beard award-winning chef, he's sober. And so, you know, if the owner's sober, they really have to bring their uh, zero-proof game. So they have a lot of good stuff. It's a full menu. I think it's almost as long as the cocktail list, if not the same length. And then Holy Ghost has a lot of good mocktails as well. They have all the sort of non-alcoholic spirits uh, in their mocktails. And so you really kind of get the same effect. Uh, it's not just like juice. <laughs> yeah, because you could just get stuck in that soda water cycle yeah. or soda, which is just like, ugh, you know? Yeah. Although bitters and soda, I will say, my, my go-to. Yeah. It just doesn't seem like the bartender's that stoked to make it. They're just like, mm. cool, great. Yeah. Glad you're here. So I actually went to Susol because we did a show on cocktails. And so we were going out to cocktail bars to figure out which, you know, which ones do this, which ones do that. Um, but the thing I did notice at Suso was their non-alcoholic menu, and I had one, and it was so good. Oh, yeah. You know, I feel like the thing with a non-alcoholic beverage is that you can kind of just slam it because there's no alcohol. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like a refreshing fr fruit punch juice, basically. And you're just like, oh, nah. But, like, they have such depth of flavor that you're yeah. actually, like, sipping it. Definitely. There's one I want to try, um, which Gregory told me is one of his favorites. It's called the G Tamarind, and it's got tamarind and jerk spices. And uh, I don't know. It's, you know, purposely meant for sipping, and that's just something you don't see that often with a non-alcoholic drink. Right. Well, do you have uh, some favorite beverages when you were checking these places out? Um, yeah, they have another drink at Susol called the Fui Passion, and it's got passion fruit and a banana shrub, and, you know, you can't go wrong with that kind of thing. Holy Ghost, they have a non-alcoholic version of their gin fizz. Um, their gin fizz is like one of my favorites. And so the non-alcoholic one is just as good. It's got cream and orange blossom water and you can't really go wrong with that. That sounds awesome. Well, another feature of these places that you pointed out were that the activities didn't center around drinking. So these were bars, basically. Like, that, you know, if you Google them, it'd be like bar. But they had more going on. So a group could go and if you didn't want to drink you could still do a, another thing that wasn't drinking soda water um that's what i picked up from it i mean yeah i think some of them are more bars and some of them are more like places that happen to have drinks you know for while you're doing your activity but um you know they're kind of like places that adults would have a birthday party or that you would go to <laughs> on a day i don't know i love a i love a place with that activity um and, uh, yeah, I don't know. They're kind of good because I think if you're going to just a regular bar and all your friends are drinking and you're not, I think the difference is more obvious versus when you're all doing a silly activity like mini golf. You know, it's not mm -hmm. as noticeable because you're all kind of silly. What are some of the best spots that you found? Yeah, I think Wedgehead has always been one of my favorite spots. Uh, I love that you can play unlimited pinball for, I think it's $12. It's in Hollywood. I think they have maybe like 
at least 12 pinball machines at a time. Uh, they rotate them out, too. So if you're oh. a regular, um, you know, there's always a new machine to play. And they have good food. They have good drinks, including non-alcoholic ones. Um, and I don't know, there's an activity to do, you know, and you can turn pinball into a two player game. Yeah. yeah. They have a mode where you can like compete against your friends and that's always really fun. Yeah. So I'm, I'm a big mini golf head. Yeah. That's what we call ourselves. Oh yeah. Is it? Yeah. Mini golf head. (laughs) I saw that there was like a mini golf themed bar. Is that true? Or is it, is it just a bar and they happen to have mini golf? (laughs) It's more of a mini golf place that happens to have drinks maybe. Um, Um, you know, they, they have mini golf in the front and then in the back there's like a virtual golf coaching thing where it's this giant screen where you hit the ball and I think it like analyzes your stroke or something like that. Okay. Um, I don't do any of that. What's it called? Uh, Birdie Time is this place. Birdie Time. Okay. Yes. The reason I asked is when you said Wedgehead, in my head, I was like, is this the mini golf place? I don't really know my golf terms, but you would as a mini golf As head. a mini golf enthusiast, I know yes. all the terms. Yeah, no, but Birdie Time is great. They have badminton too outside what oh i love badminton yeah it's like i don't know it's just kind of hilarious playing badminton with your friends and like trying not to fall and hurt yourself but uh yeah it's a good place they got um there's this wheel that you can spin and has you do all these fun challenges while you're playing mini golf like they'll have you stand on one foot or use like a baseball bat as your club (sighs) that's pretty cool well what other places have activities rather than just drinking yeah, uh, there's Pips and Bounce. They have ping pong, which, you know, you can't go wrong with ping pong. There's a ton of tables there. Ground Control has pinball as well as, you know, the 80s, 90s, 2000s video game consoles. Of course. Um, I'm a big fan of Mortal Kombat, you know, just smashing buttons. and. Is that the, the like, best. oh, you get... Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> who's your who's your guy? Like who's the, who's your or, uh, or gal? I think it's like Kylina or something like that. No, that's not her name. Mylena. Kylina apparently is a brand of IUD, so not that. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I really love playing Mortal Kombat with this IUD. Um, yeah. Come to life. That is the power move. Yep. Okay. What what's another place? Um, well, I've heard of Grand Central Bowling. I think if you like to bowl, right? That's a good. That's a good place. Yeah, I mean, they have a big bar in the center. The drinks are actually pretty good. The bowling alley, it's a little bougie, but, you know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. They have lots of lanes. It can be kind of hard to get a lane there, but last time I was there and I couldn't get a lane, I just went upstairs and they have, you know, what's that game where you just frantically shoot the basketballs? I think they had skee ball. Shot clock. That one, yeah, they have that one. Yeah, I'm so bad at bowling. I once, I'm not joking, Catherine, this is like a for real story here. I have like weird hands that like my knuckles are just like a little larger than the rest of my finger. Huh. So it was really hard to find a ball that would fit my hand because anytime I did, the ball was too heavy because I have like man knuckles, you know? So then I just had a really heavy ball and then my little wrist, and I was like, my little wrist. And I, at the time I was just <laughs> playing guitar, like that was like my life. And I was like, I can't fuck up my wrist, you know? <laughs> so I found a smaller ball that I was like, this feels good. But it didn't go all the way into my hand. So I was just like, I'll just like, you know, just put my little fingertips in there and just, it'll be fine. Somehow when I threw it, my hand got stuck and I went (sighs) flying like a cartoon. (laughs) So it looked like I tripped and I said to my friends like, oh, I'm I tripped. But I didn't trip. The ball just like levitated me and sent me flying. You should actually. I actually took a bowling class in college and they had us all get specially made bowling balls. That's a game changer. You had a bowling class in college? I did, yeah. What college did you go to? (laughs) It was in Ohio. So, you know, in the winter you need something to do that's inside. (laughs) All right. Well, let's take a quick break here. And when we come back, some sober, friendly spaces that you can go to alone. Maru-chan superfans are everywhere. From the busy moms who want to deliver maximum flavor in a flash to dorm room diners who want to put some slurp in their step. There are a ton of copycats you could use, but if you want to bless your bowl, there's only one true Maru-chan. Whether you choose instant lunch, ramen bowls, yakisoba, or restaurant quality gold, Maru-chan is the only ramen worth obsessing over. Smiles for all, Maru-chan. See what all the ramen hype is about at maruchan.com. How about some options for people who want like a more low-key night, maybe even want to go out by themselves and don't want to get hammered or drink soda all night? Like, what would you recommend? 
Uh, let's see. Um, the Rose City Book Pub. That's always a good spot. I think for me, it's maybe this is sort of a remnant of college days, but it's like I can't. I do better reading when there's other people around who are also reading. Interesting. And so Rose City Book Pub is a good place. Um, Holy Ghost on the weekend can definitely get pretty busy. But on weeknights, I think that's a really good spot. They have a bunch of food places that are sort of built into it. There's uh, 28 Tigers, which has Chinese food. And then there's Electric Pizza Company. So uh, you can kind of just sit, have a drink, alcoholic or not, and uh, get some food. And then I've actually gone to Wedgehead by myself a fair number of times just to get better at pinball. Uh, There's a lot of people who do go there and just play pinball. So you're a big pinball person. You really like pinball. I do. I don't know. I grew up in a town that had its own pinball museum and you could play unlimited pinball there. And so I think... Where was this? Yeah, this is in the Bay Area. And so, you know, and then I used to live really close to Wedgehead. And so just, I think it's the proximity to pinball that's gotten me into it. Hmm. Interesting. I always considered pinball a game of chance. Like, I don't understand the skill factor. Like, I'm just like, sometimes it goes straight down the middle. And what are you supposed to do? You know, like, yeah, I don't understand it. But I think there's like, some kind of way you're supposed to be able to like, look at the angles and okay, the way it refracts. But I don't know all that. It's just I know it's a thing that I should be able to do, but I can't. Well, any other places you want to shout out that we didn't mention that you think are are pretty good for for mixed groups. I'm calling people who are sober and not sober mixed groups now. This is what's happening. I like that. Yeah. I actually have a lot. I've gone to both Palomar and Tropicale for Virgin Pina Coladas. They're all very good there. Ooh, I love Palomar. Um, yeah, it was really fun vibe. I also go to Victoria Bar a lot because they have, you know, they have vegan and meat stuff, but they also have a lot of mocktails as well as uh, alcoholic beverages. Hmm. I think they have about five mocktails on their menu right now yeah um did you know that they also sorry hold that thought did you know that i don't know if they still do this but for a while you could get a dinner there and then buy your dog a dinner so you could bring your dog (laughs) and they would have a dog dinner and it was so cute and i it's been on my bucket list to like go out with my partner and we have dinner and then we buy our little dog a dinner and it's like you know specially made just for a dog oh my gosh how cute is that i need to borrow a dog just for that (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but what was the other place you were going to say? Uh, well, I'm a big karaoke person, and mm. maybe Cutton's my favorite karaoke place. And I feel like, I don't know, it's just so much fun. There's so many good songs. I really like their food. And I think they have some non-alcoholic beers and CBD drinks and things like that on their menu. So there's definitely options there. I'm more of a food person than a drinks person. So mm-hmm. uh, I just love places that have good bar food. You know, I think that's more of a draw for me than going out for a drink a lot of the times. Like, I just love eating, uh, you know, burgers and onion rings at Tulip Shop Tavern and, mm-hmm. um, you know, the fried chicken at Real Min. And then I went to this place called Oak House. It's over on 82nd. Um, and they have Vietnamese snails and they also have karaoke. Vietnamese snails? Yeah, it's like all kinds of seafood, including oh, um, snails. And uh, I also had a balut there. What's a balut? It's uh, like a fertilized uh, duck egg. Oh. Yeah. Um, well, what's your go-to karaoke song? This is two karaoke places you brought up already. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> I've done I Believe in a Thing Called Love by The Darkness. Ooh. Oh, my gosh. That's a range. You got a range, Catherine. I don't know if I have a range, but I think it's one of those songs that's so fun that no one cares if you don't quite nail it. Okay. <laughs> I hope. (laughs) Even though everyone just dreads it when they're like, oh no, here she goes again with I believe in a thing called love. That's so funny. It's really high up there, you know? Definitely. Falsetto. Got to work on it a bit. Well, I feel like we named all the places that exist in this town that (laughs) that someone (laughs) could go to and have a chill time with their friends. My Sober October didn't go that well, but maybe now I'll be armed a little better with more knowledge here and my dry January will succeed. That's just what I'm hoping. Yeah, good luck. (laughs) Well, Catherine, thanks so much for hanging out. Yeah, thanks for having me. Just a quick correction before we jump into the news. Our executive producer, John Natariani, would like everyone listening to know that this classic video game sound I attempted to make is actually from Street Fighter 2 and not Mortal Kombat. Our deepest apologies to all 90s gamers, and I leave you with an actual sound effect from Mortal Kombat. Finish him. And now for your microdose of news. 
Portland public school parents are worried kids won't return to school until after Thanksgiving break because of the ongoing teacher strike. While there have been some negotiations regarding class size caps and lesson planning, pay raises are still fracturing a potential compromise between the district and the Portland Association of Teachers. Also, Oregon leaders travel to Portugal to learn from the country's longtime drug decriminalization policy in an effort to improve Measure 110, our state's decriminalization law. The Oregonian reports leaders may take lessons from Portugal's successful prevention strategies or the way police and treatment providers coordinate, as well as their focus on reducing overdose deaths. But the differences are notable. Portugal hasn't had to deal with fentanyl and methamphetamine, which makes Oregon's drug problems uniquely different. For even more local news and events, sign up for our daily newsletter, Hey Portland, with our link in the show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Portland. Thanks so much for listening. If you enjoyed the show, please share it with a friend, rate, or leave us a good review. It all helps us out. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more from around the city. Until then, see you at Slim's.